Welcome to this clinical skills video. Today we are going to be focusing on venipuncture. The objectives of this video are to provide you with a brief overview and framework for performing the venipuncture procedure following the UHL guidelines. We will also direct you to further resources which contain more detailed information. To aid your learning, we will be breaking this process down into four separate stages. Stage 1 involves obtaining consent from the patient. When you enter the patient environment, you must decontaminate your hands, introduce yourself and identify the patient using full name, date of birth and hospital number. This should be done by checking the patient wristband against an official hospital document, such as a blood request form. You can then move on to gaining informed consent. In order to do this, you should provide the patient with a simple explanation of what you would like to do and why. You should also describe the potential risks, for example bleeding and infection, along with the benefits, such as aiding the diagnostic process. After this, ask the patient if they are happy for you to continue. Once you have gained consent, you should make sure that you are safe to proceed by inquiring about the patient's relevant medical and drug histories. This includes any allergies the patient may have, particularly in relation to the venipuncture equipment, for example latex. You should also ask if the patient has had blood taken before and whether they have a needle phobia. More information on this section can be found in the workbook accompanying this video or in the UHL venipuncture policy. Stage 2 requires you to gather the equipment for this procedure. The following items are needed for performing venipuncture. Trolley Sharp spin Blood request form Inco pad to protect the patient environment Two sets of non-sterile gloves and apron One for cleaning your trolley and tray The other as part of your personal protective equipment at the patient bedside You may require goggles if you deem it to be appropriate Hand sanitizer, claw clean and wipes for cleaning the trolley and tray, a high sided plastic tray, tape, disposable tourniquet, monovet needle, chlorhexidine wipe for cleaning skin, appropriate monovet blood bottles, and a cotton wool swab. Stage 3 is performing the procedure itself. This video will demonstrate how to gather the equipment seen in stage 2 and correctly carry out venipuncture using the Monovet system. You should begin by preparing your equipment in the treatment room. Start by decontaminating your hands. The WHO 7 stage hand washing technique must be used every time you decontaminate your hands. Don your apron and gloves and clean the trolley using ChlorClean. You must ensure that you clean the whole trolley but for the purposes of this video, we will just clean the top. Allow the trolley to air dry for a minimum of three minutes. During this time, you can clean your tray. Clean the inside first and then the outside, using a different wipe for each. Remove your gloves and apron. Decontaminate your hands and wait for the tray to dry for three minutes. During this time, you can gather the equipment onto the trolley, making sure that there is a sharp spin to hand. Do not put the unopened equipment in the tray at this point. You must now decontaminate your hands. Check that all of your equipment is in date. Remove the needle from its outer packaging and attach it to the first blood sample bottle. As the key parts are still protected, 
you can place the bottle and the needle into your tray along with the rest of your equipment. Place your apron and gloves onto the clean trolley. Decontaminate your hands and proceed directly to your patient. Once you are at the patient's side, you should decontaminate your hands again. You should reconfirm the patient's identity against the blood request form and confirm that the patient is happy for you to proceed. Position the patient so that they are comfortable and ensure your equipment and sharps bin are within easy reach. Apply a disposable tourniquet to the patient's arm and palpate for a suitable vein. Once you have located the vein, release the tourniquet until just before you perform the procedure. Use the chlorhexidine wipe to clean the patient's skin using a vigorous rubbing action and allow the skin to air dry for 30 seconds. Apply the apron and gloves. Reapply your tourniquet to distend the vein. Do not repalpate the cleaned area of skin. Pick up the first blood bottle and unsheath the needle. Apply traction below and to the side of the proposed puncture site to help immobilize the vein. Advance the needle, bevel up, into the vein at an angle of approximately 30 degrees. Care should be taken not to insert the needle so far that it continues through the vein and out the other side. Once the needle has punctured the vein, you can release the traction on the patient's arm. You must not let go of the needle hub at any point, holding it securely between your thumb and index finger. Fully withdraw the plunger, allowing the bottle to fill with blood. If you require further blood samples, turn the sample bottle anti-clockwise and separate from the needle. Invert the bottle gently and place in your tray. Attach the second and subsequent blood sample bottles to the needle. It is important that you hold the hub of the needle firmly during the changing of the bottles. Once you have filled all the required blood sample bottles, remove the last one from the needle and release your tourniquet. Without pressure, apply the cotton wool swab to the puncture site. Withdraw the needle and put it immediately into the sharp spin. Now apply pressure directly over the puncture site. Use a piece of tape to secure the dressing. Turn your attention to the blood sample bottles. These must be labelled at the patient's bedside. Write clearly and legibly using black ink, ensuring that the ink from your pen will not smudge. Remove the plunger from the bottle by pulling it until you hear a click. At this point, gently snap off the plunger, placing it into the sharps bin, and repeat this process for all the bottles. Remember, if your attempt at venipuncture is unsuccessful, you should restart the whole process from the beginning. Never reinsert the same needle into a patient. You can have a maximum of two attempts and then you must ask another colleague to perform the procedure. Stage 4 covers the aftercare of your patient. Place the labelled sample bottles into the transportation bag. A biohazard bag should be used for samples from high-risk patients. You can then thank the patient, making sure that they are comfortable. Tell the patient that if they begin to experience any bleeding, pain, or signs of infection, such as redness or swelling, then they should notify a member of staff. Before leaving the patient area, you should recheck the puncture site and decontaminate your hands. Document what you have done in the patient notes and inform a member of staff if appropriate. Clear up any remaining equipment, ensuring that the trolley and tray are clean for the next user. This completes the venipuncture video. Accompanying this, there is a workbook with test yourself questions. More information can also be found in the UHL venipuncture policy. We hope you now feel more confident and wish you the best of luck.